everyone, and welcome to this, another episode of 2D Fundamentals. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode, we took a look at a traditional method of creating animation. We made a ball roll from the left-hand side of the screen to the right-hand side of the screen. Now, when I say traditional, uh, I don't mean we did it by hand. Obviously, we did it with a, uh, a program. We used Photoshop. But what we went through when we actually built ourselves a number of frames, one frame for each image we wanted to produce. We saved those images, and we put them up in a... Uh, we put them up in a nonlinear editor, and we put them all together to create ourselves our animation. Today, what I'd like to take a look at is a program called Spine. Spine is a, a 2D animation package that allows you to build skeletal structures or rigging systems for 2D assets. I've been asked to teach this to my students at Sheridan uh, for their 2D Fundamentals course, and I'm actually learning it as we go along here as well. It uses uh, ideas that I'm, I'm already familiar with. It uses much similar ideas to Toon Boom, where you're building a skeletal structure for 2D assets. Uh, it allows you to tween them. It allows you to go through and build a mesh, etc. So a lot of the concepts are the same. But I'm actually exploring this software for the very first time, and I'm actually going to be doing it with you guys, all right? So today's episode is strictly a first look at it, so you guys see it. I'm going to show you where to download it, that kind of thing, and then we're going to move on from there. All right, guys? Let's get started. Okay, guys, so this is where you download Spine. I'm on Esoteric Software, esotericsoftware.com. Uh, this is where you can download Spine. Now, let's take a quick look at it. Basically, on their homepage right here, there's a Try Now button, a Purchase button, and there's a bunch of information about who uses it for what, etc. I personally have never, ever seen this in the field. I've never seen it in any studio or anything like that. I'm sure it's being used out there. I'm sure if you guys do a quick Google search, you'll find people who are actually using Spine professionally. All right, I'm sure. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly decent package for what it does in fact and, and the company itself is very responsive any issues I've had with it they've gotten back to me immediately all right so let's take a look at it right now so basically the like I said the features and everything are listed here you can go through and you can read about what exactly is good about spine etc uh, there's some documentation here uh, it talks about the spine editor you can go through and, and and take a look at the user guides you can take a look at these videos that kind of thing interestingly they these videos and the the user guide is is, is fairly straightforward. It basically describes the software and what the software does rather than how to use the software. I'm hoping that the videos that I create are going to help you guys out with actually how to use the software. The The videos they have here and the user guides don't actually go through and, and do any kind of like example projects or anything like that. They don't take you through an example project in any... I, when, I, when I built this video anyway, they didn't, they didn't do that. Uh, so you guys might want to take a look at that. Uh, and, and if you're interested in, in Spine, then come on over and check out the rest of my things as we move forward. Because we're going to actually do individual assignments where we're going to use Spine to do them. All right? Let's go take a look at purchasing the software and the differences in the purchase. There is an essential package, and there is a professional package. There is a trial package as well, which is actually what I'm going to be running on uh, on my desktop. I actually have an education license, which is right down here. I actually have an education license that's available through my school that I'm able to create all of my different all of the different things for my teaching, like I'm doing right now. I'm able to teach to do all my teaching stuff on the educational license. However, I can't do anything professionally with it. Uh, I think ultimately I am going to purchase a professional license uh, for my own desktop here. Uh, so let's take a look at the differences. The trial itself will let you do pretty much anything that you want to do with the package. It'll really let you test out the package in its entirety. What you can't do is in any way save. All right, you can't save a package. You can't save any of the work you do at all. And obviously, that's the the whole reason why <laughs> you're going to go through and use this. So the trial version is really about trying the software out. And I encourage you guys to follow along with what I'm doing uh, with the trial package. All right, to make sure that you like it before you go through and buy it. The essential package, which is about seventy dollars, so it's sixty nine dollars. Uh, I think that's American prices. I would I would think sixty nine dollars American. Uh, it doesn't actually say. I'm assuming. Oh yeah, USD. Uh, so I'm assuming it's sixty nine dollars. Anyway, the essential package doesn't include a number of things. It doesn't include meshes, freeform deformation, weighted meshes, IK constraints, uh, transform constraints, or path constraints. So you're missing out on a, on a fair amount of important stuff in my opinion. Um, you don't have to use any of that kind of stuff. In all honesty, you don't have to. In fact, I think the majority of the exercises we do at the beginning here, we're not going to use that at all. So if ultimately you decide you want to, to try out something, 
you want you want to go past the trial you want to save some stuff you want to build yourself a simple game you want to build yourself you know your your sprite sheets etc then try out the essential package it's 69 dollars and you can upgrade at any time for the difference in the price to the professional the professional version gives you everything including the meshes etc all right we'll take a look at what exactly what that means in later episodes as well all right guys so let's go over now let's open up the package itself and let's take a look at exactly what spine can do all right this is only going to be an introduction to spine and in our next episode in our next uh, video we'll actually take a look at using spine to complete one of the exercises our first exercise all right guys let's go okay guys so you can see now that I've got a trial version going here in case you're using the trial version. That's fantastic. Uh, I've got the trial version going here. I've got the trial version on my actual desktop and I've got a faculty license on my on my laptop. So for everything I'm going to be doing, I think for the next little while anyway, we'll be taking a look at it on the trial version. I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy myself the professional version of this as well. Anyway, guys, what you're looking at here is just a, a quick view of something that I created. I whipped this up pretty quickly. It is a character, a knight character that I'm going to end up using for a, a project at school. Uh, and it's a simple character, really. And basically, what I've got here is I've got a number of images. Let's take a look at them. Boop. I've got a number of images that I saved out uh, in Photoshop, different layers in Photoshop, and I was able to bring them all into, all here into Spine. Afterwards, I was able to take these images, and we can see that there's a bunch of them set up here. If we take a look at this root here, we've got a bunch of these images underneath these various joints here. Uh, here's my belt, for example. So what we're looking at here is each of these things that I'm highlighting are joints, and those joints are created, creating a hierarchy, a control hierarchy, that's going to allow us to move our character about. Okay, uh, each one of these joints has associated with it a, a number of these attachments, all right? And these attachments uh, have associated with them an image, etc. And whenever the joint itself moves, the actual image moves as well. So let, let's see, if I take a look at this thing here, I've got this on rotate right now. If I'm moving around this hand joint, you can, oh, I missed it, I missed it. Let me grab this. If I'm moving around this hand joint, come on, grab it, grab it, grab it. You can see that I'm moving around the actual uh, joint as well. Uh, it, it was a little bit difficult to grab there, and that's just because I'm still in the setup mode. I'm not actually in the animation mode where I'm supposed to be animating. Anyway, guys, uh, let, let's take a look at what I've got on the screen right now. Uh, I've got this thing here. It says setup, which is where the area where you actually go through and you create the actual structure. When I exported this from, from Photoshop, I used a particular, uh, a, a particular script. It exports it in a very particular way so that everything comes in in, in the right order and in, in the right location. I can then simply simply draw my joints in place. We're going to take a look at character creation and simplistic joints in the next episode. All right, so that's what we've got going on here. So in the setup screen, I can go through and I can create different joints. All right, I simply go through and I can add them in, and it'll build my build me a hierarchy here. If I take a look at my hierarchy of my joints, we can see all the hierarchy I have here. All right, that's the hierarchy of my joints right here. It all stems from a god node, which is located wherever I've placed it. You can place it in a very particular location in Photoshop, or if you let it come out at zero, 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 it'll actually pop in at the corner of your actual image, okay? So that's in the, in the setup mode. In the setup mode, you can go through and you can build your entire joint structure. If I click right here on the setup, it shifts over to this animation mode. In animation mode, I can go through and I can create myself a number of animations. Let me just get rid of this for a second. Let's go down here and take a look. I've got a number of animations that I've created here. Now, like I said, this is my first character. We're currently looking at the run. Uh, if I hit play here, we can see I've got a really, really basic run associated with this character. I have an idle uh, a root motion jump as well. If I click on this, you can see my root motion jump. So I've got a number of different things set up here already. It didn't take very much work. The animation itself was fairly straightforward. It only took a few minutes to actually do this. Now, um, what we're seeing here, a couple of different things. We can see that there's a, a couple of, you can see that how that now my, my individual images are moving along with the joints. As I've animated the joints, the individual mo motions, the individual uh, images are moving along with it. A couple of things to take note of. Um, the hierarchy itself is moving. I have the option to make an FK or an IK system with the, with the professional version. There's an IK, FK system. All right, I've got IK for the legs here. That's what these orange circles are. And then everything else is FK. Something else interesting of note is I've got myself this mesh up here. So you can go through, and again, this is a professional version thing. You can go through, and the images you bring in, you can create into a mesh. Now, the mesh itself allows me to go through and associate 
the mesh with a particular number of bones. And we can create a weighted system so that the mesh moves differently with these bones. Take a look here. I'm just going to scrub through this very, very slowly so you can see it. Take a look at that actual plumage I have up here. As I scrub through, you can see the plumage itself is moving along with those bones, but it's one piece, and I'm getting the wave motion that I'm expecting within that plumage, which is really, really awesome. So this is a weighted mesh. Meshes themselves can be animated in different ways as well. If I click on this, I can actually drag around individual points of the mesh, and I can animate that as well. Let me control Z that. There we go. I can animate that as well, so I actually can move individual mesh pieces around. And that allows for some pretty powerful animation. Let's say I want to make this character swing in a particular way, and I want to change the angle of a sword or whatever. I can either go through and draw several different frames that I could turn on the visibility on and off in this section over here. Uh, I can change the draw order as well. So right now I've got my draw order set up. This is my draw order and I can change that as well. This can all be animated. Uh, but what, I'm, what I could do if I wanted to, I could also, instead of having a number of different images that I'm turning on and off, I can actually go through and manipulate the mesh itself. Uh, let's just take a look over here at the difference between a mesh. So this is the plume right here. We can see it looks like this. If we take a look at, for example, the shield, the shield looks like this. The 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 image is slightly different. All right, and this this tells me that I'm able to animate it. Uh, there's a couple of interesting things on here as well. If we take a look at any point, let's take a look at, for example, his. Uh, let's take a look at his hand joint right here. Uh, his hand joint right now has a number of keyframes on it. Uh, yeah. A number of keyframes on it. If I click on any one of these keyframes, I'm getting an entry occurring within the within this graph editor. All right, and if you're used to a graph editor, uh, if you're used to a graph editor, then you you really this is different than you you normally expect it to be. Um, the graph editor itself here only allows the transition between two points. So I'm only seeing between these two keyframes currently. All right, and the problem with that, the big problem with that, is that I don't get an overall picture. Right, I don't get an overall picture of, of how my, my animation curves look. Another issue that I've got with Spine right now is that I can't uh, independently change uh, translation values. So right now in rotation, we only have rotation around this axis, like around this axis right here. It's, it's the Z axis, I guess. I have rotation around the Z axis that's pointed out towards me. And I can manipulate my character both in the X and the Y. But on, in translation, I still only have a single curve. Uh, do I have anything here? Yes, this has some translation on it. Uh, can I see it if I scroll down? How come I can't see this? It's down here and I can't see it. My IK leg. Anyway, my IK leg has translation on it. Uh, that's the translation right there, the blue. Uh, has translation on it, and I'm only getting one curve in here for both the X and the Y values. So I can't individually manipulate the X and Y values, which is going to become a difficult issue later on, and we'll deal with it, don't worry. Anyway, guys, that is Spine. That's all I'm going to show you for now. We'll take a look at more of this stuff as we move forward. I just want to show you exactly what it was. There's a lot of powerful things in here. You've got some ghosting options. You've got a lot of different stuff that's available here. We're going to take a look at how to animate with it, how to use it in a later update, in a later episode. All right, guys? For now, that's what I really want to show you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Hopefully, you download Spine and you're following along with these episodes. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys are creating. All right? Thumbs up. Thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.